My name is Yedidia Harush. When you say the Gaza border, do you mean in Israel along the border with Gaza? Correct. On the border with Gaza, there is, uh, by definition, by the government, any community within seven kilometers and below towards the Gaza border is considered to be the Gaza envelope area. That includes about 60,000 people, four different municipalities, and um, people who just want to live their life happily and peaceful. So when people claim, people who are not familiar, but are under the impression that uh, Israel is occupying Gaza, what's the reality of the situation? Reality is that uh, when I was born and raised, I, I grew up in the Gaza Strip. That was uh, 30 years ago. Gush Katif. In Gush Katif, in the communities of the Gaza Strip. And, uh, you know, that, by the way, you know, we were sent there by the government, by the mostly left-wing government, uh, the Labour Party. And uh, when I was 17, about 13 years ago, these uh, communities have been uh, evacuated uh, and uh, been destroyed by the government, part of uh, the disengagement plan of Ariel Sharon back in 2005. The Jewish communities were, were destroyed? Correct. And we had a lot of greenhouses which were left for the Palestinians to work for, because we in Gush Katif, most of our employees, uh, 90% of them were Palestinians who uh, live in, uh, in Gaza. Uh, we gave food to the table every single week. And uh, the American uh, Jews thought that if they be, you know, buy those greenhouses and leave them for the Palestinians, they can then grow and, uh, and, and continue what we left. But unfortunately, the week later, they broke everything and sold it to iron. And today exactly, is uh, by Hebrew date um, is uh, when uh, we left Gush Katif and uh, th that day um, 21 synagogues in Gush Katif were burnt on fire by the Palestinians, or by, mostly by Hamas. Uh, after we left big signs that says this holy place do not burn. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very uh, a heartful um, a, you know, um, day for us. Ariel Sharon claimed that the withdrawal would give the Palestinians an opportunity to prove that they were would be good neighbors in a Palestinian state alongside Israel. Thirteen years experience, what have they demonstrated? So, I think that uh, 13 years later, there are just more tunnels. And terror tunnels. Terror tunnels, attacking tunnels, more rockets. The communities of Gush Katif are still barren desert. Some of them became Hamas terror uh, bases. And on the other side of the border, people who were evacuated from Gush Katif took this same amount of energy and turned this into beautiful new communities where I live, on the Halutza communities, new area in the desert of, uh, of Israel. Mm -hmm. What kind of things grow in these uh, farms? Tomatoes, cucumbers, lettuce, eggplants, cauliflower, broccoli, pineapples, strawberries. Strawberries too. How about livestock? Do they have animals? We're just in the middle of uh, building our uh, chicken farm, which is going to provide 50,000 eggs a day. And um, our dairy factory, which is going to be the biggest in Israel. We have many, many animals alongside the border, many cows, um, sheep, horses. So these uh, terror kites, uh, Molotov cocktails floating over the, the border into Israel, have they burnt down? Uh, any of your property and, uh, and, and livestock possessions? Unfortunately, many. Many property was been uh, damaged inside the community and outside. Many animals were burnt. And um, deer? Deer, turkeys. sheep, turkeys, chicken, bunnies, you know, uh, cats, dogs. It's very, very sad. Very, very rare animals that we have in our area uniquely. These animals don't fight, they don't pick a side. They just live there. Mm -hmm. This is not, uh, they're not part of the conflict. They're not part of anything. And it's, uh, it's hard for us to see our childhood, uh, you know, uh, nature being burnt. Mm -hmm. As well as uh, agriculture, w how much land has been uh, uh, wildfired by these terror uh, attacks? About 10,000 acres. Now for Israel, that's a lot of, lot of land. It's a lot of land. It's about four times the amount of uh, Central Park in New York. What kind of attention 
have you gotten uh, for your cause from the international press? Not too much, unfortunately, and that's why we are here. We're here to tell the story because we feel that the story has not been heard. The story of us living on the border with Gaza has not been heard. These fires appear on the media as just innocent balloons, but they're not. They're dangerous, and they destroy, and they burn, and they're not good. And we're here to tell the story and to give hope that we're there, and we're going to overcome this challenge, just like many challenges has been uh, upon, you know, uh, coming towards our way uh, in the past and uh, that we're strong and have strong spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to, the, we talked about the, the, the f uh, flaming kites, but aren't you also what, uh, t targeted by rockets? Of course, we're targeted by rockets and it's not easy uh, to run to the shelter to take my, my daughter. Every time we go out, she asks me, Daddy, where is the next shelter? Where is the next shelter? Where is the nearest shelter? And she's five year old. We went to a vacation uh, four weeks ago and we wanted to get out a bit from the situation. And uh, when we got to this uh, vacation home, uh, the owner showed us everything. And uh, room by room, he walked us. And when we finished, he walked out. And my daughter comes to me and she goes, Oi, Abba, we forgot to ask him where the bomb shelter is in case we need to run. She doesn't know distance. She's five years old. And that's the situation that we, we live in. But as I said, you know, we're, we're fortunate to live in this area, to live in Eretz Israel. After 2,000 years, we waited and prayed and so many generations dreamed of coming there. We have the opportunity, we have the, we're privileged, we have the privilege to live there, to be there, not just to see it, not just to dream about it, but to live it. And we're proud and we're happy and that's what keeps us going. There's so much uh, a push for a state for Palestine, a Palestinian state, what would that mean for your region? Well, I, uh, I think that for us it doesn't mean anything because the Palestinian state that they're talking about is part of Judea and Samaria. Uh, I think it's too far to think about it right now because uh, let's uh, get the two sides to even sit and talk. Let's two sides to recognize the right to exist of the other, that we are here for love, and we are here to live side by side. I think Hamas's entire existence is based on hatred, is based on uh, not good. And, um, you know, we are the Israeli defense forces, we are defending, we are the people of Israel, we, we want love, we don't want war, we don't want to fight, we just want to live side by side, to have our life. My dream is to go back to where I grew up, in Gush Katif, to buy from Muhammad, maybe our orange juice in Khan Yunis. That's my dream, to go to the beach that I loved so much. I don't go to the beach anymore since, because of this, you know, it was a beautiful beach in Gush Katif. It's hard for me. So this is my dream.